Bokatov Khavri, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very, very odd situation at the G20 summit. Uh, and I'm not talking about all the rioting and the looting and burning of cars and all of that, but uh, the G20 summit, as reported by many uh, mainstream media, both from Russia and the United States, that uh, as I think it sums it up in the very words from Sputnik right here, most anticipated G20 meeting between Putin and Trump reveals positive chemistry. And I have to say, when it comes to President Trump and uh, that of President Vladimir Putin, I've stated from the very beginning, back before the election was completed, that if President Trump became president, that it could bring about some lasting peace with Russia. But at the same time, ever since President Trump has become president of the United States, I have constantly been concerned that this is a deep state really running what's going on. And I think that they have Trump as nothing but their puppet on strings, and he's doing exactly what their bidding is. And I have to say that, especially in, the li in light of the ceasefire in southwest Syria. If there truly was going to be lasting peace, why wasn't then that this uh, was not just a ceasefire in southwest Syria, but in the entire nation? Why doesn't the U.S. bring under control the Free Syrian Army in eastern Syria, around Al Tanf, where the U.S. base is in their, the no-conflict zone? Why not Raqqa? Why not put a stop to ISIS? Why don't they really fight together, as President Trump wanted to do with President Putin from the beginning? And President Putin has been pushing the U.S. to help fight and get rid of ISIS, instead of airlifting these men out of Al Raqqa and taking them into some unknown disclosed location. What is really going on behind the scenes in Syria? Now, let me just share with you this article here from Sputnik as well, and this might give you a little bit of insight on what I'm talking about. The article is Divide and Rule Why Washington Won't Leave Syria. Let's look at some of the key facts in this article. They really caught my attention. Two foreign ministers, Sergei Lavrov and Rex Tillerson, who briefed journalists on the results of the meeting, which was initially intended to take 30 minutes but lasted for over two hours, said the two leaders managed to give a logical continuation to Syria peace talks and hosted by uh, Astana, which wrapped up just a day before. Three ceasefire guarantor states, Russia, Turkey, and Iran, with the help of Jordan and the U.S. as observers, have been trying to coordinate a whole range of uh, specifics on the establishment of a four de-escalation zones in Syria. Experts from Russia and the United States and Jordan completed today the work of the capital of Jordan, Amman. They agreed on a memorandum of established of de-escalation zones in southwestern Syria in Dara, Quenetra, and Aswade provinces, which will have a ceasefire in force from midday Damascus time on July 9th which is tomorrow, Lavrov told reporters immediately after the Trump and Putin meeting. All right, now here's what gets rather odd. Look at where this is at. We are seeing here on our map here, we have Damascus here, Lebanon, Israel, the Golan Heights there in Israel, uh, also Amman, Jordan, where the U.S. has forces here near uh, Dada is right here in this area here, Al Suwaid is right here. All right, so all this area here, all the way even on the border of Israel and the Golan right there uh, coming up Quenetra is right here on the border here with Israel all these areas is where the Syrian military has been having great success in defeating Isis and Al Qaeda but yet the US wants a ceasefire so that they don't fully overtake the Al Qaeda and Isis armaments that are there. It's very puzzling to me. I appreciate the fact that they're wanting to bring a ceasefire, but if this was really a ceasefire that was meant to benefit the Syrian people, the Syrian government, then why did they leave out the entire country? Why not Al Raqqa, way over here to the north? Why not De Azor? Why not Al Tanf, where the United States already has their own base? The U.S. has eight bases inside of Syria without the permission of the Syrian government. So this, the land is being carved up, not because of President Bashar al-Assad, who is the rightful uh, president to the people of this nation, but they're carving it up once again, like they did during World War I. 
what is this under the French mandate, I believe it was, or was Syria the British mandate? I think it was the French mandate was the, was the dividing of Syria. Again, we're seeing biblical prophecy. They divide the land for gain, or the earth, Adama, for gain. Not Israel specifically, in this case here in the prophecy, but all the lands of the Middle East. And they keep doing it for their own gain. You keep seeing prophecy. I actually just started a book yesterday that is specifically dealing with all the prophecies that are being fulfilled in the Middle East and what's coming. So don't get your mind totally off the, the main idea. Don't kid yourself. NATO, the coalition, is going to take down Damascus. Their eye is on that target. But if they don't get a ceasefire in there somewhere and get their men regrouped and rearmed, they're not going to be able to take it. Not without it being very obvious of what they're doing. Because you see, the Syrian military, neither the Russian military, nor that of the Iranian military, have fell for the bait to draw them into a conflict to justify taking this all down. I think this is what it is. It's a, it's a game. It's a play. Also, so I want to share with you one other thing here as well. A little bit off subject, but still about the war in Syria. Vanessa Bealey, she actually tweeted this article out here, U.S. threatens world seed security in its war on Syria. Fascinating article here to actually read. It was written by Brandon Turboville. I uh, don't know if I'm saying his right, name right, but anyway, the International Center, Center for Agricultural Research in the Dry Areas is one of 15 important international agricultural research centers. It is also the, the host of a seed bank which contains 150,000 samples in its temperature-controlled seed vaults. But here's what gets really sad. In the war, these guys stayed there as long as they possibly could, trying to keep their seeds safe. They even, of course, made the ultimate mistake by sending a lot of their seeds to the uh, seed vault in Norway, which you know is controlled by the GMO, NATO, all the groups there that could care less about the natural seeds, except for keeping them out of your hands. And the reason I say that is because why? The GMO, the genetically modified version seeds that they're trying to put out there, is what that genetically modified food is what will help your body better live in a nano world, in a transhumanism world where the nanobots that you're breathing in through these chemtrails that the governments are so kind to spray all over the earth and everything, that's all being done intentionally. Because your body, the more aluminum you keep sucking into it day by day, day after day, the only thing that would ever combat that would be to be more natural in what you eat. They're trying to stop that and stamp that out. You know, in fact, uh, one scientist actually stated the best defense you have against breathing in the chemtrails and these nanobots is to actually go to a meatless diet. And I'm not saying that you have to by no means, but if, if, if you eat meat, at least go organic as much as you possibly can. Because even the animals, they pump them with so much hormones and, and everything else you can imagine. In fact, cows, they're fed meat now. They're no longer the vegetarians that they were created to be but they have to eat meat as well. They mix meat and all the extra byproducts into their grain, mix it all in, give it to the cows to eat. And then of course we breathe in all these nanobots, which are nothing but uh, microscopic organisms, by the way, which no filter can keep out whatsoever. So one of your best offenses is to eat natural and try to eat as much vegetables as you possibly can, organic not GMO. Watch what it says in this article right here. Thankfully, most of the seeds were copied and the project continues, but the seeds the United States has added to its volumes, excuse me, uh, voluminous list of wars, a new war on seeds. At home, the U.S. does everything in its power to eradicate natural seeds in favor of genetically modified crops, and across the world, it pushes GM biotech harder than any heroin or crack dealer uh, on the streets of Chicago. So you want to know why there's a war in Syria? Those seeds are one of the reasons. Syria, and believe it or not, Iran, which we all demonize the best we possibly know how, also is another nation that refuses the GMO crops in their country. No wonder why they're all on the target list to be destroyed. Interesting, isn't it? Anyway, Wars are deeper than what we realize, friends. In a new world order, they're trying to push it. I think that may be, too, why President Putin has actually agreed to a ceasefire in carving up Syria. Remember, biblical prophecy is being fulfilled when they carve up Syria. Why? Daniel says that they would divide the land for gain. That's not Haaretz in Hebrew that we say for the land of Israel, Haaretz, but instead Ha'adamah. 
the earth. They divide the earth for gain. So it's not inclusive of Israel only, as we've made the mistake so many times of saying about what's going on. It's the entire Middle East that they're dividing up. As they're doing once again for gain, they all get the prize. What does President Bashar al-Assad get? Well, I guess they say to him, he gets his life. Unfortunately, it makes it very troubling. They had so quickly all the peace plans in place in Oman, Jordan. Ah, one of the strongholds for the Pope of Rome, I do recall. And another interesting thing is the fact that uh, Mr. Kissinger visited President Putin recently. I can tell you for one, I know some journalists that are very confounded by the move that President Putin has done. I think it's so that ISIS and Al Qaeda can regroup and get prepared for a coming attack on Damascus. Hopefully I can write this book fast enough before they do the attack so you can see that what I'm telling you is the truth. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.